Every once in a while, I come across a deck that's out of print or just no longer available, and it totally breaks my heart because it speaks to me on a level that um, just really resonates and makes me want to get it and work with it. And usually I'm pretty good about moving past those feelings and finding other decks that are like it or better than it, um, for that matter. But there's been one deck for probably the past six to eight months that has just been stalking me. Um, it shows up in Facebook and Instagram posts. It appears in discussions I have with other readers. It um, has showed up on YouTube videos or readings that I've watched on YouTube. It just keeps cropping up everywhere I go in the tarot community. And so a couple of months ago, I started uh, to search around to see if I could get a used copy of it since it's out of print. And the secondhand market for this deck was astronomical. People were asking anywhere between $250 to $500 for these decks. Um, and it just, it was way above what I was willing to pay um, for a stack of cardboard. Now, that being said, um, there's nothing wrong with paying that much if it's a deck that you just absolutely love. Um, but for this specific deck, um, I just wasn't willing to pay that much. But then I made a post and I had um, a very lovely soul uh, come into my life who offered me the deck at a very reasonable price. Um, and so I scooped it up. And I was very fortunate to have um, not not only the deck that I was looking for, but the limited edition um, independently published version of the deck offered to me. And um, I was just blown away. So today we're going to be checking that out. Hey Tarot Tribe, it's Dustin from A Modern Metaphysic Man, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through The Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. I am so super excited to have this deck finally as a part of my collection. It's been a deck that has been stalking me probably for the past six to eight months on social media, in discussions about the tarot, in books I read about the tarot, in... Um, social media posts on Facebook and Instagram it just keeps popping up and it keeps appearing to me and I love the artwork because I personally um, am obsessed with the Renaissance time period um, the artwork of the Renaissance and things like that so I've been on the hunt for this deck for some time as I'd mentioned before and it finally 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 came to me um, for not an astronomical price. Now, like I said, this deck is right now currently out of print, and this specific version of the deck is no longer available. It was a limited run, self-published edition of the deck of, I believe, 500 decks. The bags were handmade by Cat Black's mother, from my understanding, um, and they also included a lovely little um, handmade necklace, which is super fun, and it has a little piece of agate on it which I absolutely love. Um, and it also came with one of those like classic, you know, early 2000s branded pens that everybody was like super into for a while. Um, and I was super impressed that the person who had this in their collection still had all of the little bits and pieces. Um, and the person who sent it to me was really, really lovely. She um, included this amazing little uh, crystal pillar, which I just simply adore. It's a little quartz pillar, um, and it's very, very transparent, but you can see that it's crystal because at the bottom here, it's a little hard to see on the camera, but at the bottom there's some crystallization that you can clearly see. So it's a lovely little, um, little crystal, which I just love. So we'll, we'll keep that there. And she sent also um, an amazing card. I won't read the card because there's a lot of personal information in it, but it's a cat with a dandelion on it, which is just totally me. I love cats and I love dandelions, so I thought that was very fitting. And her letter was very nice and um, kind of told me the story about how the deck came to me and and it just seemed to be, you know, the, the perfect time for it to find a new home, which was, I just love that. I love those little stories and those little touches. Um, so yeah, 
let's dive into this. It comes uh, in this nice little bag, which is like soft and velvety on the inside, and it has silk on the inside. It also has a little tag that says the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. And on the inside we have the deck. So the card backs are really nice. Um, they're just sort of a traditional uh, floral motif, I guess is the best way to describe that. Um, so nothing, nothing crazy or mind blowing there, um, but very simple and very pretty. The card sizes themselves, I'm just gonna grab uh, a fool from the writer tarot. Um, and this is my 1971, so it's really nice. Um, but as you can see, the cards are a little bit um, wider than your traditional tarot, but a little bit shorter. So they're not a standard tarot size, but they are lovely. The cardstock is really nice. It's it's like a standard US Games cardstock. It has a slight sort of lamination. Nothing too crazy or overly glossy. The decks are not, or the decks, the edges are not um, gilt in any way, shape, or form. And it does come with a nice little, um, <clears throat> a nice little title card, which is lovely. And they're signed and numbered. So cat number, this is number 191 out of 500. And has an image of Queen Elizabeth the first and in fact it's here on the business cards that were also included um, and this is one of my favorite 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 and before we'll, we'll dive into this we'll go into a little art history lesson here my favorite images of Queen Elizabeth the first because it's a beautiful piece of propaganda and the reason why is that if you look at the fabric here and here that um, is that adorns her dress they're, it's covered in eyes and ears and mouths. And so when she had this painting done, the message that she's sending, right, is um, one of her, her, her overreaching power and ability to hear and see everything that is spoken. Right, and that's that is one of the things that I love about Renaissance paintings is that they are full of symbolism and meaning and um, message because back in this period you have to remember that the amount of people that could actually read were very 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 little but symbolism was something that was prolific in the in in the prolific in the period right um, people learned it from going to church every Sunday which everyone went to church every Sunday. There really wasn't an option not to. Um, it was compulsory, right? And so the, the language of symbolism is really, really predominant in the art of this time period. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I just simply adore it. And so when I saw this deck and when it started to stalk me and it had a lot of my very favorite um, paintings from the Renaissance and Baroque periods, I, I was like, okay, I need to work on getting this in my collection. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's absolutely lovely. So we'll do a quick flip through of the cards themselves. And then um, at the end, as always, I'll come back and uh, talk about some of the things that stood out to me. Um, and as always, in the description box below, you'll find information about the deck, the creator, um, the artwork in the cards, as well as all of my social media links and where you can find me, where you can book a personal reading with me, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> so be sure to check that out at the end of the video and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So yeah, let's dig into the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. So before we go too crazy into this, um, the deck did come with two full cards, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'm not entirely sure why it came with two full cards, but there are two full cards. So yeah, let's... Uh, Let's take a spin through the Touchstone Tarot.
So that is the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. Um, you may have noticed here the final card I've left um, on the table is the Happy Squirrel, which is just a really fun um, little tongue-in-cheek piece of tarot history at this point now. If you're not familiar with sort of the background behind the Happy Squirrel is that there is an episode of The Simpsons in which Lisa visits a tarot reader um, or a psychic to have her fortune told. And through the course of her reading, the reader pulls several cards which are not in um, the actual tarot. And one of the cards is the happy squirrel. And so a lot of decorators just loved that and have sort of tongue in cheek, um, tongue in cheek to the, the card into the deck, uh, into several different decks. And this is one um, rendition of it. And it's just, it's just wonderful and perfect and uh, cracks me up. Now, the thing about this deck um, that I really love is that all of the pages within the deck are depicted as students. Um, so they all have the sort of scholar cap on um, and they're, they're, you know, studying and things like that. And it's really great that she took the time to really think about how these figures would um, be depicted. The other lovely thing is, is Yes, this deck is collage. It's digital collage, right? Obviously, you know, this figure eight and these coins were not a part of the original painting, um, but they're seamlessly added. And she did such a really wonderful job of making these a part of the deck. Um, some of the cards are some of my favorite cards actually are associated with historical figures. So the Queen of Swords is um, Mary Tudor, who is also known as Bloody Mary. <clears throat> um, she was a little bit of a notorious tyrant. Um, she she uh, reigned between um, the death of her father and her, her young brother, who had a very short sort of stint, and <laughs> Elizabeth I. So um, a little history lesson there. I love the nine and ten of swords in this deck. They are just, I don't know, they're exceptionally wonderful. Um, the four of swords is really wonderful because you get this sense of sleep and rest, which I really, really appreciated. The queens are all really wonderfully depicted. Um, even, uh, the Seven of Cups I thought was really clever, how the cups were presented almost as a tapestry. Um, and tapestry was a huge thing in this period, and in fact, it was a lot more common than I think people understand it to be. The Queen of Wands is Anne Boleyn, and if you know your history, Anne Boleyn is the woman who beguiled Henry VIII and had Henry VIII uh, break from the church, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, and establish um, the Anglican Church, or the Church of England. And, um, you know, having her be, you know, the representation of uh, the Queen of Wands I just thought was very fitting. You know, she's depicted with her classic uh, necklace that, you know, is, is very famously associated with her, the Boleyn necklace with the three pearl, um, the three teardrop pearls, which I just thought was wonderful. Um, the Two of Wands I thought was interesting that it was um, a female figure, not something that you commonly see. Um, and also the world card um, is depicted as a male figure. We did have a creepy baby in the sun card, but not the end of the world. I adore this moon card. It's absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful. Um, just a, a wonderfully beautiful piece. The hermit card I thought was really fitting. Um, I love the, the aspect of him being like out in nature. Um, and being a part of, of that. I, the lover's card I thought was really interesting because it's very clearly a depiction of Adam and Eve, um, which you know has tons of symbology behind it. And of course, I just love the fool card in this deck because you know it's still very the fool. You know he's kind of stepped off the cliff in this depiction of him. You know, but he's still got his dog. He's playing a whistle. It's just wonderful. So that is the 
the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. I absolutely love her decks. Um, I love her digital collage work. If you haven't checked out the Golden Tarot by Cat Black, definitely check that out. Um, I'll probably do a walkthrough of that next um, in conjunction with this one because it's just, it's one of my favorites and I absolutely love it. So let me know what you think about this deck in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm so, so, so excited to have this as a part of my collection. I'm definitely going to be spending a lot of time working with this deck um, because it just, it really speaks to me. It speaks to me on the level of the tarot. It speaks to me on on a level of art appreciation and art history and it speaks to me on a level of um you know history not just art history but historical stories and, and figures that i um have just always been fascinated by so yeah thanks for joining me in checking out this deck um i super appreciate all of your love and continued support um and yeah remember everyone's fighting a battle that you know nothing about so be kind, always. Bye, everybody.